It's just beautiful to hear the birds here on the laneway coming up to the rectory. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service of morning prayer on this, the Sunday before Advent. This is also known as the Feast of Christ the King. And it follows on from Remembrance Sunday, last Sunday, very appropriately, because even though last Sunday we had the Gospel from Matthew, the Beatitudes, where the line, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, was our, the focus of, of our attention. Um, that peace process after the First World War, which gave rise to Remembrance Sunday, uh, didn't really work very well. Uh, within two decades, the Treaty of Versailles had sufficiently destabilised Europe and the consequences were the Second World War and war ever since has been um, following on. So this Sunday we remind ourselves that unless Jesus Christ is at the focus of our attention in being the Prince of Peace then we are not doing God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And that, therefore, is our focus today. Learning from the Gospel, where Jesus was talking to Pilate, and he said that his kingdom was not of this world. It was a kingdom born of peace, very different to the world in which Jesus was born into. And so we take as our line of scripture from the Old Testament, from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23, one who rules over people justly in the fear of God is like the light of the morning. And so we turn to page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And so we turn to page 104. And we say the Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23, verses 1 to 7. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, 
the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favourite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The Rock of Israel has said to me, One who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so to our psalm, Psalm 132, which I will read under this mighty oak tree, the king of the forest, reminding ourselves of how David relied on God the way we rely on Christ the King. Psalm 132. Lord, remember for David all the hardships he endured, how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a, a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come within the shelter of my house, nor climb up unto my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Now we heard of the ark of Ephrathah, and found it in the fields of Jair. Let us enter his dwelling place, and fall low before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and your faithful ones sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David, a promise from which he will not shrink. Of the fruit of your body shall I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion for himself. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I have longed for her. I will abundantly bless her provision. Her poor will I satisfy with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful ones shall rejoice and sing. There will I make a horn to spring up for David. I will keep a lantern burning for my anointed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading is from the Revelation of St. John, chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we sing hymn 20. 
The King of Love My Shepherd Is. The King of Love My Shepherd Is, Whose goodness faileth never, I nothing lack if I am His, And He is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, My ransomed soul He leadeth, And where the verdant pastures grow, Which food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, But yet in love he sought me, And on his shoulder gently laid, And home rejoicing brought me. In death dark fail I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thy unction grace bestoweth. And oh, what transport of delight From thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days Thy goodness faileth never. Good Shepherd, may I sing thy praise within thy house forever. Reading the Gospel like on Remembrance Sunday from this small New Testament, which was an active service edition from the Second World War. We read from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 18, beginning at verse 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the King of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this Sunday, in effect, marks the end of the church year. Next Sunday, Advent Sunday, when we look forward to the second coming of Christ, as well as the first coming in Bethlehem. And this Sunday is therefore very special. It's a high point in a way of the church year, given that it's the culmination of all that celebration of Christ's birth and uh, his, his sacrifice at Calvary, his rising from the dead, Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the ministry uh, of the uh, disciples, the building up of the church, the building up to whatever way we can, the kingdom of God in this place. And now we have the kingship of Christ, Christ on his throne at the right hand of God. 
But it's quite a recent feast, really, in terms of the focus. And the focus was given a huge amount of support by Pope Pius XI, who in 1925 wrote a special encyclical to emphasize the importance of this feast, the uh, kingship of Christ, because he could see, as could others, perhaps, but he particularly was very prescient in forecasting that the punitive conditions of the Treaty of Versailles were not going to deliver the peace that would make the First World War the war to end all wars. And how right he was, as in 1939 the outbreak of war again would convulse the whole earth and almost every nation in one way or another in, in war. And so we come to a point where we realise that we need Christ as the peacemaker, as the Prince of Peace, to give us the focus, give us the leadership, give us the strength to make the sacrifices that are needed to make a lasting peace. And in the early 1920s, when Pope Pius XI was writing, fascism had come to power in Italy, um, communism um, had come to power in, in 1917 in Russia, and Hitler was on the rise in Germany. So all of those regimes made a point of, um, of displacing um, religion. Uh, they certainly didn't want Christ being worshipped and as a result you could say they not only killed Christians but they also tried to kill Christ and take his crown and put it on themselves and they became effectively the gods for their people. And the result of course was horrible, horrible suffering and the the Gospel that we just heard from the Gospel of John has an exchange between Pontius Pilate and Jesus Christ in which Pilate is trying to get to, to, to understand what is this Christ talking about when he calls himself a king and Christ says my kingdom is not of this world and we learn a little about that in the Lord's Prayer when we pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So not only is this one kingdom to take account of heaven and earth, but it is also a kingdom where God's will is done. And God's will is done, it's not just a matter of doing good rather than doing evil, it is um, making sure that we are active actively doing good. To do nothing is not going to make Christ's kingdom come. And so how can we be more Christ-like on this feast of Christ the King? Well, can we bring the light of Christ into somebody's life? Uh, the light of love, the light of service, the light of hospitality, uh, the light of humility and the strength for somebody to rely on that would help them get through another day and appreciate the role of Christ in our lives as well as in their own lives. And Remembrance Day has taught us that peace is far more than just a piece of paper, a peace treaty. It needs the Prince of Peace. It needs the humility, the strength, the service that Christ brings to our lives. And next Sunday is a day in which we'll be confirming 15 uh, candidates um, from our parish and from a neighbouring parish. And so on that day we will be asking Christ to come into their lives and they will be asked in turn, do you turn to Christ? And in turning to Christ, they are endeavouring to meet Christ, to get to know Christ, and to serve Christ, the Prince of Peace. And we do that each time we break bread together, whether it's at a home communion or whether it's in church, 
when we break bread together, we take that spirit of Christ into us and we use that strength as Christ wants us to, to do his will on earth as it is in heaven and to make a reality in other people's lives, the reality of Christ the King, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And so we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And turning to our collect for this, the Sunday before Advent, the Kingship of Christ. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so on page 114, we say the second of the Colics at Morning Prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, as we mark this last Sunday of the church year, celebrating that you are the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Light of the World, help us not only to serve you, but to get to know you in the sharing of bread and to get strength to serve you and enjoy that freedom from worry which a closer walk with you makes possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of Christ, for Michael, our Bishop, and for the Kingdom of God worldwide and especially in this Bunclody Union of Parishes. In Ireland, we pray for our young people, especially those preparing for confirmation in our own parishes next Sunday in St. Mary's Church, Bunclody. We also give thanks for the Young People's Jam Club, the Jesus and Me Club, for the leaders, for Rachel and Daphne, and Rachel, the mother of Joshua, Rebecca and Samantha, and for Dawn, mother of Linda and Jane, and for Dawn, mother of Katie, Ben and Vicky, and for Elaine, mother of Ali, and for all other parents and leaders who are in the process 
of volunteering at the moment. We also ask your blessing, Lord, on those adults who generally care for children and encourage youngsters, especially those encouraging young people to read in church and to take a greater part. And we especially thank you for the global vision of Mother's Union, looking out for children in parts of the world which are affected by poverty through the Christmas shoebox appeal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your world. We pray for followers of Christ in places torn apart by war and in places where governments are hostile to people who worship Jesus Christ. May the good work of Christians in their own communities win over these hostile forces, just as Jesus did by reaching out to the sick and vulnerable and the strangers in his ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to bless all who are not well today. In a moment of silence, we just bring before God our own personal prayers. Those of us, Lord, who with you love and care for each one we pray for, lay your healing hand upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our comforter and our hope everlasting, we remember our loved ones who have gone on before us. We commend them to your loving presence until that glorious day when we long to meet you in the heavenly Jerusalem. And Lord, we pray the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so to the blessing. And we take a line from the reading from Revelation 1, in which we read, Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the King of Kings. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with those you love and for those for whom you are praying this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>